I want to thank you for the warm welcome. But please, not so loud. <laughs> Donald was listening. Sleepy Don. <laughs> I kind of like that. I may use that again. President Biden had jokes. That was at the White House Correspondents' Dinner on Saturday evening. I love how President Biden goes, Sleepy Don, Sleepy Don. Of course, Donald Trump's been falling asleep every day in trial. Every day in the morning, Donald Trump falls asleep. And as we previously reported here, sources in the courtroom also talked about how, like, as Donald Trump was falling asleep, he was passing gas. And the whole thing is just so gross and so odd. And President Biden was having some fun at the White House Correspondents' Dinner. There here, President Biden talks about how at least his own vice president endorses him. Here, play this clip. But look, (laughs) age is the only thing we have in common. My vice president actually endorses me. I had a great stretch since the State of the Union. Well, Donald has had a few tough days lately. You might call it stormy weather. What the hell? But President Biden did, of course, have to concede that in this race, age is an issue. (laughs) Here's what he had to say. Play the clip. The 2024 election is in full swing. And yes, age is an issue. I'm a grown man running against a six-year-old. Well, I feel great. I told you, President Biden is coming out with some pretty good jokes. I love him being self-deprecating. Again, that shows confidence. And I love that he's just going right for the jugular with Donald Trump. And he didn't just reserve his jokes about Donald Trump. Also, Lauren Boebert got in on the action. Uh, No pun intended. Here, play the clip. Look, (laughs) being here is a reminder that folks think what's going on in Congress is political theater. That's not true. If Congress were theater, they'd have thrown out Lauren Boebert a long time ago. (laughs) And the media wasn't safe from President Biden's jokes. Here's what he had to say about the New York Times and other uh, outlets that are whining about not having enough access to him. Play this clip. Now, to all my friends in the press and Fox News, some of you complain that I don't take enough of your questions. No comment. Of course, the New York Times issued a statement blasting me for, quote, active and effectively avoiding independent journalists. Hey, <laughs> if that's what it takes to get the New York Times to say I'm active and effective, I'm for it. It's okay. I have higher higher standards. I do interviews with strong, independent journalists who millions of people actually listen to, like Howard Stern. You know, and then with all of these White House correspondence dinners, obviously it starts off with President Biden being good natured, joking, showing a sense of humor, which I think is important in any leader, you know, to be able to take a joke, to give a joke. Remember, Donald Trump never even showed up to these White House correspondence dinners because he couldn't handle like making jokes or people making jokes about him, like he couldn't handle it at all. But then they take it to a really kind of serious point, President Biden does. And President Biden says, though, look, look, we're having fun tonight, but in all seriousness, You have to take when Donald Trump's talking about being a dictator and calling you all the enemy of the people, you have to take that very seriously. And we've seen what he's tried to do before and stop with this horse race of, you know, of the drama and the clickbait. Like, let's focus on what's actually at stake here. You really got to do your job, media. I thought this was uh, an incredible moment from uh, President Biden's speech. Play the clip. On the third anniversary of January 6th, I went to Valley Forge and I said the most urgent question of our time is whether democracy is still 
is still the sacred cause of America. That is the question the American people must answer this year. And you, the pre press, play a critical role in making sure the American people have the information they need to make an informed decision. A defeated former president has made no secret of his attack on our democracy. He said he wants to be a dictator on day one, and so much more. He tells supporters he is their revenge and retribution. When in God's name have you heard of another president say something like that? And he promised a bloodbath when he loses again. We have to take this seriously. Eight years ago, you could have written off it as just Trump talk, but no longer, not after January 6th. I'm sincerely not asking of you to take sides, but I'm asking to rise up to the seriousness of the moment, move past the horse race numbers and the gotcha moments and the distractions, the sideshows that have come to dominate and sensationalize our, sensationalize our politics. And focus on what's actually at stake. And I think in your hearts you know it was at stake. The stakes couldn't be higher. Every single one of us has a role to play, a serious role to play, in making sure democracy endures, American democracy. I am more my role, but in all due respect, so do you. In the age of disinformation, credible information that people can trust is more important than ever. And that makes you, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart, makes you more important than ever. So tonight, I'd like to make a toast. To a free press, to an informed citizenry, to an America where freedom and democracy endure, God bless America. And then at the end, President Biden made a toast to the uh, free press and to the preservation of what should be a robust fourth estate to the First Amendment, uh, to the hardworking and courageous reporters out there. Here, play this clip. That's why I want to close the night with my genuine thanks to the free press. There are some who call you the enemy of the people. That's wrong and it's dangerous. You literally risk your lives doing your job. You do. Covering everything from natural disasters to pandemics to wars and so much more. And some of your colleagues have given their lives, and many have suffered grievous injuries. Other reporters have lost their freedom. Journalism is clearly not a crime, not here, not there, not anywhere in the world. And, and folks, what a great moment. I'm going to do a whole nother hot take on Colin Jost and his uh, speech, which was hilarious. Um, I'll, I'll show you this small portion, though. I found it funny where he goes. Well, uh, on the one hand, basically, uh, how's, uh, Donald Trump says that President Biden is both senile and also a criminal mastermind. And by the way, President Biden, must be, you know, must be a lot of work for you to be dealing with <laughs> rigging the Super Bowl and rigging elections and rigging, <laughs> rigging everything. It's another good moment. Here, play this clip. It's also wonderful to be back in Washington. I love being in Washington. The last time I was in DC, I left my cocaine at the White House. <laughs> Luckily, the president was able to put it to good use for a State of the Union. <laughs> I'm kidding, of course. The president doesn't call it cocaine. He calls it high-speed rail. By the way, can you blame the guy for turning to cocaine? He must be exhausted, orchestrating four separate trials against his rival, rigging the Super Bowl, and gearing up to steal a second election. Wow. <laughs> Biden laughed. <laughs> I love, by the way, that Trump's two attacks on President Biden are that he's a senile old man and a criminal mastermind. I'm like, I think you gotta pick one. Personally, I don't know any criminal masterminds who bike to get ice cream. Folks, what I loved about this White House Correspondence Dinner, and let me know what you think about it, is 
Again, the normalcy here, the fact that President Biden could take a joke, that President Biden's willing to you know, laugh and have jokes at his expense over his age. But I think he really brought it to Donald Trump there, you know, and basically calling Donald Trump out for being sleepy, calling Donald Trump out for um, having his own vice president not endorse him, how Donald Trump acts like a six-year-old. I thought those were actually really important points that President Biden made. And look, we, we've talked about President Biden saying he's you know, willing to debate Donald Trump. And as I've always predicted here, I still stand by it. I highly doubt that Donald Trump's going to debate President Biden. And one of the biggest tells is that Donald Trump right now is already saying, I want to debate right now in the courthouse, or let's do it at a MAGA rally in Michigan. Let's do it right now. That's part of Donald Trump's pathology where he starts to set up Uh, his excuse why he doesn't do something because he'll say, oh, well, I said I was going to do it and then you refuse to do it. Now I don't want to do it. No, just follow the rules. You'll do it when the debates happen, when the invites get sent out. You'll go in front of real journalists and you'll debate. And Donald Trump's going to say, oh, it's rigged and I can't do it and all these things. So we know where that's going to happen soon. Anyway, um, what a night. What a night. What are some, some great moments there by President Biden. Tell me what you think in the comments below. Um, and uh, we'll see each other soon. Hit subscribe, have a good one. Let's get to 3 million subscribers together. Love this video? Make sure you stay up to date on the latest breaking news and all things Midas by signing up to the Midas Touch newsletter at MidasTouch.com newsletter.